Welcome back guys for another fictionalhead.com quick tutorial. Uh, today's tutorial is a little bit different because it's a music tutorial as part of a uh, requirement for a music competition uh, involving a remix of a boyinaband.com song or rather a you and what army song. Um, so today we're going to be covering how to make a custom instrument in Reason uh, out of your own samples and things from other programs or from you know, recording smashing bottles or something. You could really make an instrument out of anything. Uh, and it's going to involve how to set up an NNXT advanced sampler to trigger your MIDI data. Um, so it ties into the song because there are a lot of instruments in my remix which use samples like this. Which are actually custom instruments built from samples that I've you know, culled together over the years. Uh, that one was kind of like a sitar dulcimer kind of thing and then like even near the end here I've got a piano that's built that way. Uh, whoops. By um, kind of fine-tuning each piano note to build an instrument that I like the sound of. So that said, uh, this tip generally I use it in reason because one of Reason's shortcomings, if you ask me, is that sometimes its synths aren't as great as the ones that you can achieve with some of the third-party VSTs, and it doesn't have VST support, even though they're trying to fix that with rack extensions, but whatever. Um, and I really like Reason's sequencer, so this is a way to kind of bring Reason's instrument, or more fancy instruments into Reason in order to use Reason's sequencer. Uh, so let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is if you want to build this, which is kind of what the example is here, of making a custom instrument out of maybe something that you've generated in a VST in another program, uh, I'm going to start by just using FL Studio here uh, and Massive, because this is a third-party native instruments thing, which you can't get in Reason. But say I created this synth, which... This is really just a uh, preset here, but you could make some really crazy synth and then want to bring that into Reason without having to like record the whole piece in FL Studio and then embed that WAV file later. So what you do is if you want, uh, or rather you want to record every note that you're going to want to use in Reason. So generally, the easiest way to do it is just to draw a uh, scale starting at C, ending at B, covering every note and leaving enough space in between those notes so that um, when they play they don't overlap at all. You're going to have a nice uh, break of silence in between each one. And then uh, simply record out each octave and if you want um, like a range from C1 to C7, you would want to do this all seven octaves. If you just want to do one or two octaves, you can do that too. Uh, I usually record just one octave at a time and then shift it up like that and then record the next octave uh, to get the... So once you've drawn out all your notes for your octave, all you have to do, at least if you're using FL Studio, if you're using Ableton or some other DAW to export your waves, just do it however you would. Um, and export a, a wave chunk of just those notes. And I'll just export one here. And I usually just name it whatever the octave is. So for this one, I'll just call it like C3 all, because it's going to be all the notes. And then I'll export that. And then open that up in Cool Edit, because I'm old school and I still use Cool Edit. And here we see all of the notes from that octave. And it's going to go in order if you've written it in order, which makes this really easy. You know, you got C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, and so on up to B. Um, so all you do is just clip out each note, however you want to do it with your editor. Uh, I've found in Cool Edit it's really easy to just zip to the end here, uh, hit save, highlighted form, name it like C1, 
and then just delete it and then the next part will be right here save highlighted C sh sharp one delete it next part D one and so on and name all of your samples for all of your synths or all of your instruments that you're making and name them correctly for what the note is and then once you've done that you should end up with a folder that has just all of your uh, notes in it named correctly from top to bottom so I've done this already with a couple different instruments like I said for that song so I've already got a folder here with just all of my samples in it so if I load these samples up and just play them it just goes through the scale um, this one is particularly widespread it goes from C1 all the way up to C7 and then now we'll get into the nitty-gritty of what to do in uh, in reason in order to turn this into an instrument um, like I said before you could do this with you know varying sounds of banging on a pan or you know plinking a bottle it really could be anything it's just easiest to explain if you do it with actual notes so what you do first is you load in a combinator just to hold everything in case you end up putting effects on it later and then in that combinator create an NNXT advanced sampler and it looks like I have initialization turned off for some reason uh, initialize the patch so that it's empty and then open it up and you'll see you have your uh, empty space here for loading your samples in if you hit the load sample um, button the initial inclination will be to just kind of grab all your samples and hit OK and load them in but the problem is that's going to load them in alphabetically like A A A A B B B B C C C C and the problem with that is that that's not how the keyboard works so it becomes much easier if you hit your button and then actually click them in the order you want to load them so I'm going to start with C and I'll just do uh, one octave here or well yeah one octave so I would do C2 hold down control C sharp D D sharp E F F sharp G G sharp a a sharp B and hit OK and you could do that for all your samples you could load 70 at a time and it would still work um, when you do that you're gonna end up with this look here where it's basically all of your samples loaded in in the order you selected them and then a full uh, note selection for how what they're gonna cover when they once it's loaded in like that the quickest way to do this if you have loaded them in in correct order from C to B is just to right click once you have them all selected and you can either control click them to select them or just hit control A and it'll highlight them all uh, right click and hit auto map zones chromatically and what that does is it's going to stack each note just triggering on a single key and it actually binds the root key here with the low key and the high key so that you only end up with a single note will trigger each of these samples uh, and it very well could be off sometimes it's on sometimes it's off depending on where it starts so if I select my top note here which is C2 it has bound it to the root note of C1 so clearly it's off all I have to do is just highlight them all and nudge it over until it's at C2 and then if I stop there now C2 is at C2 C sharp is at C sharp D E all the way down to the B2 so all of these have the low key which will trigger it when you play it with your MIDI data here and all of these also have whoops wrong song have the same high key so it's not like if you played B3 it would trigger the B2 sample uh, if you wanted to do that you would just make the high key higher and then any key played between here and here is going to trigger this sample uh, but for the purposes of this tutorial I'll just clip it down to right there so now that I've got all those loaded in um, if I play C2 on my keyboard in MIDI I'm gonna get the note from C2 in my uh, NNXT and generally the note will play for the length of how long you draw it so like if you drew a really long note 
it would play the duration of the sample for that length, and if you drew a really short note, it would play the sample for a really short length and then it would clip it. Uh, if you want your sample to play like full all the time regardless of the length of the note, which is usually what I do because it makes it sound a little more organic, uh, all you do is just highlight all your samples and turn the release here, the amp envelope release, up to however long the average sample length is. So if your notes are like two seconds each, just turn it up to two seconds. And what that will do is when you trigger a note, regardless of the length of the trigger, it'll play the duration of the sample. Um, and then once you've done that, this obviously is just for a single octave, but I've done this with another instrument here, and we can see that it's just a stair step all the way from the very first triggered note all the way up to the very last triggered note, and it's just going to play each of these samples whenever I play those in the MIDI. So if I take that melody from the remix and dump it into that channel, it's playing these really deep synth notes, and I can very easily um, pop open the tools, raise the octave, So that's a very easy way to make custom instruments, and the great thing about doing this is that now you have the samples in your NNXT, you have the full breadth of controls that the NNXT gives you over your samples. So if you wanted to take these, um, you know, drop in a, a unison to really push the detuning, and then just route your master into the detuner and then up to your combinator, now when I play it, all those samples and the quality might not be coming through the mic because I don't have a direct line feed in but all of the effects that you do you can directly warp all those samples so you can envelope filter them easily you can reverb them you can put different delay effects on certain notes you can run them backwards you can use the pitch here with your octaves you can you know warp them, bend them, you can load voices in this way, you can load samples in this way. So really, it's quite a powerful powerful tool, um, and I use it all the time for making kind of custom instruments like this, just because I like kind of the, the nitty gritty of being able to really refine down what I want a sample to sound like, and then take that sample and then just make whole instruments off of it. Um, this, this can lead to very bloated files, admittedly, if you have like uh, an NXT which has got, you know, 80 some little 1 meg stereo sample clips in it. But as long as you're not sending your files to other people, it's probably not a big deal. Um, I find it just leads to very rich sounds, and uh, you'll find a lot of those in the remix probably mixed in there. There's some of them I use are synth, some of them are uh, more worldly, like this one. Um, but yeah, it, it works great. And, uh, that's the tip, I guess. Hope it was helpful.